I welcome you very much indeed to our time of adoration before the Blessed Sacrament this night, as we journey as pilgrims in this season of Advent, a time of hope, a time of celebrating the coming of Christ at Christmas and his birth, but also looking forward to his coming at the end of time. I welcome you all very much indeed as we all join together as God's family this evening and we begin by asking God's grace and blessing on all our lives as we pray. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Perhaps it's good to step out of the hustle and bustle, the constancy of the everyday in terms of life and good to be still in front of Christ, who beckons to us and understands our hearts so beautifully. So let's take a little moment as we enter into our time of meditation, just to settle our hearts. And maybe we've had a busy day, maybe we are carrying all sorts of anxieties or fears or indeed joys and hopes, Let's place these before Christ, our Saviour, our Redeemer, our Brother, our hope, our, our constant friend and companion on our journey. Let's take a little moment. So I'm going to sing that enigmatic piece so much associated with the season of Advent, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, that mourns in lonely exile here, until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, O come, the Lord of might, who to thy tribes on Sinai's height. In ancient times didst give the law, in cloud and majesty and awe. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. We enter into this time of peace in the presence of Christ with our hearts open and we think today about that wonderful gospel which figured that central character of John the Baptist. So I'm just going to take a little extract from the gospel of today, the second Sunday of Advent. From the Gospel of St. Luke. He went through the whole Jordan district proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins as it is written in the book of the sayings of the prophet Isaiah. A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare a way for the Lord make his path straight. Every valley will be filled in, every mountain and hill be laid low. Winding ways will be straightened and rough roads made smooth. And all mankind shall see the salvation 
of God. We catch a wonderful glimpse of John the Baptist today. This character who was born for this purpose, to be someone who proclaimed the Messiah and prepared a way for him. John the Baptist is undoubtedly consumed by this mission. There is no fear within him because he is very conscious of God's presence within him. And so he sets out, embarks on this mission with a sense of vigour and interior integrity and strength. But he does so, knowing that he can affect hearts and change perceptions and offer a whole new, fresh message about the Kingdom of God and the Messiah. For many people at the time of John, he was a curiosity, someone whom they wanted to see more out of that sense of inquisitiveness rather than the message that he carried. But there were others who were affected by his message of repentance and turning away from what consumes us in a negative way to what gives us life and freedom. He was a challenger, was he not? But his voice cries in the wilderness, the strangest of places, for a voice to be heard. The wilderness seems somewhat remote to me, and yet he chose this place to begin to proclaim his message, a message of hope, a message which enables so many people to feel a whole new sense of acceptance belonging. Of course all of this was undoubtedly to make ready that pathway for Christ the Messiah. And soon John would hear about the effects of that Kingdom of God already making a difference. The lame would walk, the blind would see, the dumb would speak, the voice cries in the wilderness. When we think of the world in which we live today, there are many voices crying out in the wilderness, many prophetic voices pointing us in a good, wholesome direction, in faith and love, the love of God. There are many voices too that cry out with a sense of angst and anguish. So many people who are suffering in so many ways and on so many different levels. So many nations plunged into difficulty, all magnified, of course, as a result of our current pandemic that we all experience. I suppose in many respects for us, our task is to try to listen not just to hear those voices, but to listen to the voices in the wilderness that encourage us on the one hand, challenge us, and perhaps present a new fresh, fresh message in Christ as we journey. So today we think about those who do in many ways suffer, suffer from illness, loneliness, pain, anxiety. Those who undoubtedly are the chalk face of the everyday, dealing with, with people in the field hospitals of life, as Pope Francis calls them. John the Baptist was filled with a sense of deep he was filled with a sense of interior peace and serenity, which is beyond price. 
these aspects motivated him and kept him going and he would pay the ultimate price in his role and mission of preparing the way for the Messiah, holding on to that faith to the last. In these turbulent days, as the church often described as the bark of Peter makes its way through the world, we pray that we would all always turn to Christ who is in the boat with us, steering us in the right direction, protecting us, urging us to pull together as that trusted crew. Let's take a little moment just to pause in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament this evening and call to mind those voices, those prophetic voices in our lives that give us hope, that lift our spirits, that point us in the right direction, that enable us to go forward and not to be afraid. Those who bring healing of a different kind through a gentle presence, the sacredness of touch, prayerfulness. Those who undoubtedly try to carry Christ into our lives and give us that sense of purpose. Let's just for a little moment call to mind all those people who, like John the Baptist, listen to our voices crying out in the wilderness of life and the ups and downs we experience. Let's take time to savour these people sent into our lives by God. Recently, I was invited to bless a ward in the local hospital where I'm a chaplain. And a very privileged position it is, along with the other members of the team, all part of the same crew, who I value so highly. It was a wonderful occasion, an occasion of great hope, as I encountered the staff the sisters, the doctors, the other nurses, all who work so hard and give of themselves. I have no doubt that they are, have experienced the rough and tumble in these days of pandemic, and yet I was greatly heartened by their sense of commitment, their professionalism, their humanity and their desire to journey with those who are not well. For me, in many respects, all of the staff were those who listened to the voices crying out to the wilderness. People who have their own ups and downs in life, their own family struggles, I am sure, and their own concerns, and yet their aim and mission is to bring healing comfort and support and I have also no doubt that faith is a big part of that journey. To all those doctors that I encountered that day I give great thanks to God. There are many people 
who encourage us, many people who journey with us. As we continue our reflection this evening, let's just bring our prayers for those who are unwell at this time. Dear Jesus, we come before you as a broken people. We come before you as a people who you know only too well. We place our anxieties, our fears and hopes before you. We ask you to enter into our lives all the more and to help us to abandon ourselves even more into your hands. We pray today for all those who are unwell, those who are suffering from perhaps COVID-19 or any other illness, both physical and or indeed mental. We ask you, Lord, to walk on the storms of their lives and to grant that healing and renewal. We pray for those who suffer from loneliness, and that has probably become much more the case in these difficult times, where loneliness can eat into the very essence of a person. We pray that there will be bridging points of new life and new hope and that their voice crying out in the wilderness may indeed be heard and listened to. It's amazing how one small encounter with a community of faith can reignite a sense of purpose and a sense of belonging. We remember those who experience that loneliness. We pray too for refugees, those who are endeavouring to try and find a new beginning, a new chapter in their lives, sometimes putting their lives at risk as we know only too well. There is a great sense of sadness that they have to leave their own country in order to find a new home. I hope and pray that the international community will endeavour to do all it can to aid and help those countries which have many problematic issues and that the international community working together with a sense of purpose can enable people to actually remain in their own place of birth. to keep them safe, to find a sense of rootedness and new life. We pray for those who experience a sense of being hurt. That can be isolating, a sense of being misunderstood. We ask you, Lord, to grant healing and forgiveness. And perhaps where there has been a sense of hurt that we might have the courage, that John the Baptist like courage to reach out and to be able to say, I'm sorry. And to be able to receive that healing forgiveness too. We pray this evening for some specific intercessions in regard to those who are unwell. We pray for the speedy recovery of Sindhu from the after effects of surgery. We also pray for the healing of Vibin, who has been diagnosed with a lump near the spine. Pray for healing. Pray for the intervention by 
those specialists to bring about a sense of healing and hope. We pray for the complete recovery of Michelle, who has been diagnosed with lymphoma. And we are grateful for all the medical advances that have been made that can come to the assistance of all those who are unwell. And we thank God for being very much within that context. May he bless the hands of the doctors, the hands and minds of the doctors, nurses and all those consultants as they journey under so much pressure today with the sick. We pray too for the good health of Miriam to receive complete healing from sinusitis. And we pray also for Jose's brother who is suffering from arthritis. We pray too for Beula's mother to receive healing from dementia and for her peaceful life. We remember all those who are sick in all parishes, all the sick across the world. We commend them, Lord, into your care, into your love. We ask you to please unravel the knots of life and grant them that inner peace and deep healing. So for those those others in our lives that we know personally and carry within our hearts. Let's just call them to mind and place them before Christ, who is ever close to the Father, of course. So let's, in the spirit, place these people before Christ. We might remember our beautiful world too. Does it not suffer? Is it not in need of healing too? Pray that all that can be done will be done to preserve our homeland. I'm just going to sing one little verse of a piece. Oh, comfort my people. Again, very much part of the theme of Advent. How God sends his son out of utter selfless love for us. Oh, comfort my people. And come all their fear, and tell them the time of salvation draws near. Or tell them I come to remove all their shame, then they will forever. Give praise to my name. In our prayers for the sick this evening, we might remember those who also suffer from addictions of any kind, whether that's alcohol or drug abuse, whatever it may be. We pray that whatever their story is, of the complexity of their lives, that Christ may enter in and to give them a sense of courage. In many cases, it can be a question of simply being loved, being accepted and belonging. How our own past can indeed influence the outcome of our lives. But we pray for healing. And that can happen so wonderfully and miraculously. And thank God for those organisations that help, help to bring a new life, a new sense of purpose and peace, particularly in Christ. 
Lord, we commend all of our sick into your care this evening across the world. Be with them. Be with those who care for them, whether that's in hospital, in a care home, or indeed in the community. Thank you for their courage and for their kindness and graciousness. Your hands, that John the Baptist-like characteristic, listening to the voice. So we bring all our prayers together as we pray that prayer of the kingdom in the Spirit through Christ to God our Father, and we do so with all our hearts. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. May Mary, our mother, too, intercede for us. We ask Mary, a model of faith and life in Christ, to bring our prayers before Christ, who brings them with such love to the Father, our Father. As we journey to Bethlehem, a word that means the house of bread, we journey with hearts uplifted, trusting in Christ all the way. John the Baptist delighted in hearing about the news of the Messiah and the evidence of healing and the wisdom of the Son of God. I hope and pray as we journey towards Christmas and Bethlehem during the season of Advent that our hearts will be equally uplifted, renewed and strengthened. I pray God's blessing on everyone who is listening in, everyone connected with our lives for all across the world. May we prepare a place for Christ in our hearts and listen to his voice crying out to us to respond and to be part of his life. A blessed Advent and indeed, Christmas. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you and keep you, sustain you and comfort you, uplift you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Therefore, confess your sins and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective.